You're welcome back. Uh, well, there is uh, political matters arising as it is, and uh, there have been battle between candidates and supporters of uh, the PDP, APC, and even other parties, and we're here to discuss that today and many more. Joining us to discuss that is Dr. Nicholas Felix, who is APC's youngest presidential aspirant and now the Deputy National Youth Coordinator, APC-PCC. Welcome, Dr. Felix, to the program. Thank you for having me. Good morning to you and good morning to Nigerians. Okay. Uh, let us begin with your background as a cleric. Am I right? You're a cleric as well. Yes, what, informed, sir. what informed your venturing full scale into politics, knowing you have a very flourishing ministry in the Miracle Center International? Yeah, I actually got into politics uh, as a result of anger. You know, I was mad at the situation that happened here in New York where a black American was insulting a Nigeria over the phone. And the insult got to me so bad, you know, I felt like, is it a cost today in Nigeria? You know, and uh, with that mindset, I, I said to myself, you can't run away. Even though I ran to America thinking I'm free from this trouble, the plane, the, 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 the negative uh, uh, notion that Nigeria is corrupt, Nigeria is evil, has followed me here. That was the very day I launched my campaign. I still remember January 2018 to come around for president. At least if nobody is willing to throw their hearts in the gate, uh, I should be able to come out and join politics. And cause it change. That's how it began. Okay, but as of 2018 that you started, you were of the PCP, right? Why did you leave PCP yeah. for something else, for another party? Um, several reasons. I left PC as soon as the election was over. The, I had some uh, uh, number one, we learned the lesson that smaller parties would not take you there. You know, and PCP was a very young party, and I knew definitely if you want to win a national election, not even the regional, some regional parties can do, uh, you know, can help you if you're running for a regional election, but for a national party, a national election, you need a party that has the spread. Mm. That was the first reason we decided to leave and join a bigger platform that we know can get us there. And number two, as you know, I need to register a lot of the political parties. Out of 79, we currently have about 18 left. So the party was to register. Even if we were going to continue, the party no longer exists. So uh, that's why we joined the APC. Okay, but what, what are some of these things that... Um uh, that you could take from PCP and find in APC? Because I'm sure you must have done your calculations, you must have seen their, their ideologies and all that. What are the similar ideologies between the PCP and the APC that made you to choose the APC and not any other party? You see, uh, number one, APC is the largest political party in Africa, not just in Nigeria. Apart from being the, the ruling party, uh, I felt uh, the platform is what we need. The people are there, like I always tell everyone. The people are there. That's why we came to join them. No matter what you have to say about APC, the people are there. Uh, over 40 million registered card members in APC. That's a huge platform uh, for us to be able to run uh, uh, for politics. So when it comes to, come to our ideology, APC believe in progress. It's the all progressive Congress. And you must understand uh, in as much as uh, you stand with what APC believes, when you become a candidate, you are bringing your own ideology, you are bringing your own ideas uh, to the party. And right now, every Nigerian wants change. If you look at almost all the manifesto, everybody running for office, whether at the local, state, or federal level, everybody's saying the same thing. The issue of insecurity, the issue of economy, these are problems that you don't need somebody to tell you. The average Nigerian experiences it every day. So... It's, we, we all want the same thing, but the difference is who has the political will, political mind to get this job done. That's where the difference is. Yeah, well, but you say the APC is a progressive uh, party. Would you say they have done something to show that they are really as progressive as the name is? Of course. You look at infrastructure. APC, this administration particularly, did very well when it comes to infrastructure. Infrastructure. Uh, yes, in, in terms of security, I always stand by this, that they, are, they could have done more. When, before they got into office, Boko Haram was, was heavy in Nigeria. 
Then, you know, there were bombings all over the place in, in, in Nigeria. Even churches could not gather. They were able to tackle uh, Boko Haram. Even though he saw just rose up, now you have the bandits. I believe they could have strategized more to be able to defeat them, just as they did Boko Haram, and reduce uh, some of the calamities. So, yes, that's when the nearest administration now will continue from where they stop. So, in terms of infrastructure, uh, they have done well. Number two, for me, uh, when it comes to our primary election, if you monitor it very well, you notice the northern candidate came together unanimously. They allow power to go to the south. I don't know what could be more progressive than that. This is what PDP could not do. But our northern governor stood in unity and said, no, we have been in power for the past eight years. For the sake of equity, justice, and peace, let power go to the south. And power went to the south. I think that is very progressive. We need people who will not just be selfish, uh, their personal interests. Sometimes, a lot of the times, put the interests of the nation ahead. To me, that is very progressive. And uh, you look at uh, the party at large. You know, a women leader is a very young, is a very young uh, uh, medical doctor. Uh, the youth have a voice in the party. So there are a lot that are going on well for the party. And you know, we have to keep improving. That's why we are still referred to as a developing nation. There's so much to do, and we'll keep doing them. But I believe the party is a, is a progressive party. Okay. Uh, well, uh, today we are talking about uh, the the war, as it were, between parties and their supporters and all that. But you are like a symbol, you know, in the political terrain because you are young and everything. So we are going to be talking a lot about you because it is what Nigeria could be that we see in you. I hope you don't mind that. Um, now, yeah. now um, the All Progressives Congress came to power in 2015 on yes. a three-legged stool, if you, if you may, uh, corruption, security, economy. Now, everything we hear about the APC government, or most of the things that we hear about the APC government now, is infrastructure. But we're trying to see where that infrastructure and the three legs on which the APC came into power married, or where the merge. Was there infrastructure that will help in the fight of corruption? We don't seem to see. Was, were there infrastructures that will help in making the economy better? We don't seem to see. Were there infrastructure that will help in making security even better than we're finding it right now? We don't seem to see. So how is infrastructure that is being peddled now such a good mark for APC? You can't talk about infrastructure without infrastructure affecting the economy. What affects the economy? When the citizens have money to spend? So when you, like Niger, uh, the bridge that was just commissioned, or that's about to be commissioned by the president, billions of naira was put into it. There were a lot of youth, people who worked, people who supplied businesses, who made so much money out of that single uh, 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 project. So if a structure, in a way, does affect the economy positively. Again, when it comes to the issue of insecurity, I believe one of the reasons that uh, uh, a lot of people feel this administration did not do so well is as a result of insecurity. But let's not forget that when the president took over office, Boko Haram and bombing was, was, was heavy in the nation. That has been defeated. Of course, as the insurgency rose up, banditry rose up, the issue of Esme rose up. I believe they could have done more and have repeatedly said, but this administration is winding down. We have just... Uh, for a few, few days from now, election will be conducted. In another one or two months, a new administration will come in. Uh, the focus now is what is this new administration going to do to end this? We can cry over spill milk, what, what this president did not do, what he campaigned to do, and uh, what he refused or could not do. But, you know, in every, every nation, when politicians campaign, there's hardly any president or governor will tell me everything they campaigned they were able to, to achieve. But many a time they face opposition. Many a times things don't go as they plan. But at least we see that they, they make progress. If, there's one thing I've come to know about President Muhammad Aguari. He's a man I hate corruption. You, 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 we've heard him several times campaign. He'll campaign on a neutral ground. Tell Nigerians go and vote for who you think is the best candidate. Even though I don't like that as a person. But he'll go out there and tell you, vote for the best 
And one of the reasons I believe he allowed the banner redesign is because I'm sure, I'm saying I'm sure, this is my personal opinion, that the CBN government must have uh, told him that this will help fight corruption, free and fair election, and he approved it. So he's a man that I believe really hates cor corruption. He may not have been able to do it to, to the best of uh, what he intend to do. Like with every administration, with every president out there, who sometimes they want to do, but they are incapacitated because of opposition, uh, you know. So uh, they, 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 they did well, but more could be done. We are still developing. And if you look at the manifesto, the strategy of our presidential candidate is quite uh, uh, different from what he campaigned for. He is a, a, an economist, a strategist. I believe Bola Ahmed Tinubu will improve the economy in Nigeria. I am so confident in that. I will be so I will not be surprised if things begin to change. I will be surprised if things don't change. But this is a man that is very strategic. This is a man that uh, uh, is very smart. He has vision. And he knows how to use talent. That is very key. Getting the right people around you. I believe that's one thing that affected President Muhammad Obari. There may have been some wrong people in the midst uh, who did not do what they were supposed to do. But Ashwadu is one man who understands talents, who understands vision, and is able to get the right person. When you hear people who were in his administration when he was governor, you hear how he picked them. Most of the people he don't know, this is not just about, uh, I know you come and work for me or come and be in the administration. Most were recommended, never met. But as soon as he saw this person can deliver, he brought them in. And he did so well in Lagos. The today, that uh, his legacy is there. People talk about Lagos, and it starts from him. There were governors before him. You don't hear people talk about those, uh, those governors. But from him, things began to change, and Lagos is what it is today. So with that mindset, I believe he's going to do even more and better if elected right. uh, president. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of those issues are debatable, but um, that's not... Um, well, if we have need to revisit them, we will revisit them if we have the time. But right now, we're back to you. Youngest presidential aspirant of the APC. It sounds like a memory verse, if, if you ask me. <laughs> so, but please walk us through your experience contesting with people who could have been your fathers and grandfathers, knowing that uh, uh, even... From the time of PCP to this time, especially, uh, you were you were very young, you know, less than yes. forty something. In fact, yes. at the time you contested first, you were about thirty-seven, if I'm right. Yes. Okay. I was so, so what was the experience like? Uh, quite different. The first time was uh, you, you had some people who did not believe, and of course, I had so much people who believed in me. My <laughs> wife, number one, my church members and a lot of friends, that, that was very uh, uh, helpful in pursuing this dream. But uh, now crossing over to the bigger party, I must tell you, it's totally a different ballgame. Being a candidate or an aspirant in smaller parties compared to the APC is like uh, driving a, a bicycle and driving a trailer at the same time. You know, <laughs> you need two different licenses uh, to do that, two different experiences. So joining the APC, you, you get to understand real politics. You get to see the way it is played. You get to understand that uh, things are not just the way uh, it is with the smaller parties. And uh, uh, in as much as we thought we knew more, we had to be learning. We had to catch up immediately. It's one of the reasons that, that made me even step down, because we could not catch up, for example, in reaching out to the delegates. In the smaller party, it's quite different. With a phone call and uh, a few meetings, you can meet with one or two persons, and you, you've covered most of the delegates. But when it comes to this bigger party, there's a structure at the state level. You have to go through all of that, meet the delegates, meet supposedly some of the people who have influence over these delegates. So it's not as easy for the bigger parties like the smaller parties. Understanding this fact, we began to re-strategize. We began to rearrange uh, uh, some of the things that, uh, that we did. Like I always, I use this analogy to explain it. I, I fly a lot. But I always tell person, what a, a pilot who sits on the cockpit from Lagos to Bini or Lagos to Abuja, just this 30 minutes flight, you cannot compare it to the man who has been flying around the world but has never sat on the cockpit because the experience is quite totally different uh, just by sitting down uh, on the plane. So that's, that's the way I compare smaller parties and bigger parties. The dynamics is different. Now, joining these bigger parties, especially... 
I call them political gladiators, political uh, fathers. These are men who have been in politics even before some of us were born. I wasn't really moved and bothered by that because this is democracy. We all have an equal right, free hand to go there and contest. If there was only one thing I knew they had more than us, number one was the popularity, and most importantly, they found the resources. We were very limited in our resources. But I never let that be a hindrance because if I think about the resources before we venture on this, we will not even begin in the first place. You know, uh, I, I didn't think much about that. I just believe, let's get started. We'll see how it goes. That's how Obama got started. Obama started and nobody knew who Obama was. He was just elected as a senator in Chicago. And before you know it, it was one little town hall meeting. The media gave him so much attention. All of a sudden, he became the president just overnight. So I believe the same thing can happen. We don't need to, to everyone youth out there who will be taking it to go into politics. You're yeah, the one I'm talking to. You don't need to wait until all meeting is right, the resources, uh, your popularity, everything is right before you begin the journey. You can start and see how it goes. If Obama wanted to wait for national popularity, I'm sure he wouldn't have contested that. I didn't know who he was. He was just elected as a senator. But one event brought him out to the limelight. And before you know it, America ran around him and he became the first black president. So also for us as youth, I believe something is going to happen. And I am looking beyond 2023 that we're going to be able to get into power uh, unexpectedly. So if you're out there as a youth, you're thinking about politics and you are limited in resources and popularity, my advice to you is just get started. Uh, Dr. Felix, like I did say, uh, when we return, we'll be talking about some things that people say about you. Now, some have accused you of being a saboteur who is only being yeah. used to scuttle the presidential ambitions of the competitors of a paid master, widely rumored to be Tinubu. For instance, they say that in 2019, uh, you were just brought in to sabotage Atiku and the PDP votes. What would be your response to that? I'm, I'm so glad you, you're asking this question. Uh, there's been a, a video that has been trending out there for the past two, three months now with this allegation. First of all, in the video, they said I came second position. I did not come second position. I was third in the, in the election. And uh, the fact that they said I was put there to go and, uh, you know, to, to cause PDP to lose. If you follow that election, you will notice a few days before the election, I was actually with Atiku. And I had no relation, no business with APC. Number three, I got uh, just only 110,000 votes. There's no way if you add my vote to Atiku, Atiku would have won that election. So this is just uh, bloggers who have nothing to do. And I will also say, they know they are losing this election. They are just looking for excuses to go out there and, uh, and, and run with it. Now, the, the, the funniest one is the fact that they said... Uh, as soon as Peter Obi came on board, I decided to register Zenith Labour Party, and I'm the candidate of Zenith Labour Party. I was positioned to go and cause Peter Obi to lose. And I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that people are believing this because I received so much cause, anger, people getting angry, people confirming. Nigerians, we are smarter than this. For somebody to just go out there, and just put out something, and we just believe it and run with it. He amazes me, and this is why we get easily deceived by politicians. You know, I'm not a candidate of Zenit Labour Party. I never did not register any party recently. Zenit Labour Party has been there for a long time, just the same way Labour Party has been there for a very long time. Now, I'm not a candidate. There's no resemblance in any of these two. So to pedal and, you know, put such a rumor out there, and uh, they are tre it's trending, people are believing it. It, it, it saddens me. I have no connection to the Labour Party. Uh, and to Zenit Labour Party. And I've not been paid. Let me make this clear. We are, I'm not in APC supporting Ashwaju because I've been paid. Since the campaign started, I've not been given a dime. I've not asked for, I've not received a dime. We are ready to spend our money to support Ashwaju. That's how much we believe in this cause and believe in him. So anybody that thinks we're doing this because uh, you have been paid, you have been giving money, Ashwaju has money, then you have to think again. If you think Labour Party is the only party people are supporting, youth are energetic, you, you have missed it. We, the youth in APC, we are going all the way in. Whatever we can do to support, to make sure Ashwa do it, we are going to do it because we believe in him. So that rumor is false. Every bit of it is false. The last one that was said that uh, 
uh, I came, uh, it, it, it was a mystic uh, there about. It was not a mystic. We did a lot of work during that 2018 uh, election. Don't forget, it was just 110,000 votes. I mean, that's even too small with the work that we did. Youth believed in us. Uh, the President Muhammad Bari signed the Not Too Young to Run uh, uh, bill into law and gave us the opportunity. Nigerians were yearning for youth. There were so much young people in the race. And let me also clarify that other candidates in my party, like the Senate and House of Red, that were on the same ballot, not on a different election, the same paper, they did not come second position, third. Some did not even get vote at all. So if this was a mistake, it would have replicated in other candidates that were on the same ballot. We did some work. I wasn't big on social media like Shore and the rest of them, but I went to several states. I went to schools. I went to churches. I did so much of the grand work that I did not put on social media. That's why people thought uh, 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 we didn't do much. Why will you come third position? Never for, don't forget, the third position is just 810,000 votes when over 27 million people voted. For somebody to come out there and, and carry, uh, you know, present such rumor, and we're buying them. Nigerians, I think we need to do way, way better than this. Okay, but last year you rallied 22 other APC aspirants or 21 uh, something for a meeting with the flag bearer of APC, Ashiwa Jubola Tinobu. That was August or some thereabout. What was the purpose yes. of that uh, meeting? What was it supposed to achieve? Yeah, the, the, the purpose was uh, understanding the candidates was to be able to carry everybody along. You know, uh, in speaking to one or two of the candidates, uh, I feel some of them feel neglected. You know, some of them want to be part of the campaign heavily. And I thought it wise if we meet individually, you know, one of the aspirants went to court, uh, I forgot his name, uh, who went to court. I felt in, in democracy, uh, as, and as Democrats, an election is over. Yes, there is pain. Yes, many of many people were hurt. I was hurt that my candidate did not win. But you 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 let that go. We are now we we have a candidate. Delegates have voted for this candidate, and they believe is the best. And we believe is the best. All of us have what it takes to 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 deliver. But if, if the delegate chose him, and with the amount of win, one thousand two hundred and seventy one delegates, the second person had just three hundred. That tells you this was a, a landslide win. It was too obvious that this is the right man for the job. What we all need to do now is to rally around him. So the first meeting was for us to, to discuss, to, you know, appeal with everybody to shit their soul. Let's join them together. Let's win uh, this election. Another thing that uh, brought it out for me, I was speaking with somebody. Uh, I met him at the hotel lobby. While we were talking, I was just complaining that my candidate did not win. I was not happy. It's a young man. He just made a statement. He said, sir, your candidate may not have won. He may not have won the primaries, but it's still your party. Your party is going to win. It don't on me that exactly. This is what we should be doing. We are Democrats. We rally around our, our, our candidate to make sure our candidates win. And when he is elected as president, I expect every Nigeria, it doesn't matter if you voted for him or not, to join hands together to make the country work. Because we are Nigerians. That's what we are fighting for. You know. So that was the essence of the meeting. And the, the next meeting was supposed to meet with uh, uh, the candidate so we can sit down and discuss. We're still pushing. I'm believing before the election, we will have one of that. I'm going to be meeting with His Excellency Ashiwaju uh, to discuss the possibility. The schedule is, is rigorous, it's tight, but to discuss the possibility, just to have a, a chat, a meeting with, uh, with all the, the aspirants. Just to tie this to... Um why people have been saying that uh, you were not really serious about what you're doing is that a Nigerian president is not by law supposed to have dual citizenship, but you contested anyway with both a Nigerian and U.S. Uh, passport. How did you feel that was going to work for you? No, you, you, are, you are allowed to, you know, by law, you can be a dual citizen and run for president. What is important is you are a Nigerian born. I was born and raised in Nigeria. Uh, by birth, Nigeria blood flows in my vein. Uh, I always say in, in America, if, if people want to ask you where you're from here, nobody asks you if you're a citizen. They ask you where you're from. If you say you are an American, nobody will respond to that. They want to know where did you come from because that's where you really are from. So dual citizen is accepted in Nigeria. And I, I see my going to America as someone who, who went to learn. I see it as going to a school to understand a system that works. You know, 
And I've always said it, for us to see a change in our country, we need somebody, not just who have visited, somebody who have stayed in this nation, who have a taste of what it takes. And you know, Ashwagi was here too in America, schooled here. So when you hear him talk about some policies, about the credit system, student loan, it's because he understands it here. He has lived here. This is what works here. I, I have a good credit. I can go right now and I have just a little amount of money. I'll buy a car. I'll be paying gradually. I can go and buy a house. We just need a amount of money. I'll be paying gradually. We have credit cards. I can go and use it and be paying. This is how America exists. This is how America lives. This is the system. And we call it a great nation. But Nigeria don't have, uh, everything is all cash. If you don't have the complete money to buy a house, you will never be able to buy a house. Now we're wondering why we are so slow in, in development. Every developed country from Canada to Europe to Australia, this is the system they operate. But we, in Africa, we don't operate that system. I don't know if South Africa does, but majority of the African nations, they don't operate that system. So when you hear somebody like him speak like that, it's because he has not just visited, he has lived here. He understands uh, uh, the system. So I see my coming here as someone who went to be trained and coming back to Nigeria. Now, again, for for a time like this, when Nigerians, are like they, they use the word Jakba, you know, running away from the country, especially youth. And here I am, 41 years old, being in America, you know, established here, returning back to my country, tells you that this is a heart of sacrifice. So for somebody to say, yeah, he is not that serious, that, that is a, I think that is an insult to our struggle or you are belittling our effort. We are working so hard to return back to Nigeria in a time like this. I must tell you, my brother, is a huge, huge sacrifice. And that's because we want to serve. Okay, uh, let me give you, let me take this final question that is about you. Uh, before we go back to what the, the battle between candidates and supporters and all that is, that's supposed to be like the major thing we're talking about. Um, you are now the Deputy National Youth Coordinator, not actually the candidate and will never be the president in this dispensation. I'm not talking about another one because you might contest again. How do you hope to make your ideas work in this administration? Because we've seen situations where your party is going around the country uh, campaigning and telling us how they will make things work. And we are wondering why is it or how is it that people in the APC had such lofty ideas and they never gave it to the president to make sure Nigeria works. Are you going to hold your own ideas as well to wait for a time, bide your time until when you have the opportunity to lead this country before you go and exhume your ideas? Or how are you going to make them work in an administration that is not directly yours? You know, you see, every president has uh, uh, permanent members. Every president wrong with ideas. If you look at uh, when Ashuaju went to London, to Chatham House, when it was time for questions and answers, you saw how he delegated people to respond. I was very excited because that's my kind of leadership. It tells me this is not going to be a dictator. This is a man who's going to, to which has been his track record anyway. So I wasn't really surprised because people know him for this. Uh, uh, that's why when the news came out that he was afraid to answer questions, you know, it saddens me that uh, people were running with such uh, news. Now, he's a man that we, you know, have people around him. What we are praying for is to assure him to have the right people around him, which I know he is going to. It's not left for us to bring up our ideas, to bring up things to him. Of course, you are not a candidate. The candidate has his own mind and his own uh, vision. But whatever you think you can bring on board, uh, as a, a suggestion to contribute to his administration. I'm quite sure Ashwagi is going to listen. That's one of the things that attracted me to him. I remember when we met September 22nd, we, we had a meeting. There were some things I suggested to him, and he took them. And surprisingly, some were put in place. Some are still, you know, still in the process. That's what we need as president. It doesn't mean now uh, he's going to take everything you see. No, but no, no uh, leader does, because some may go against what you want. Some may not be uh, the right hand. But I believe as we share ideas with him, in line with his vision, I believe he's going to take them uh, and, and run with it. Let me make this very clear. There's going to be a change in Ashuadu's administration. Ashuadu is a man of vision. Ashuadu is a bold man. I don't want Nigerians to forget this. We need a bold president. 
somebody who has the political will to take decisions. You know, being a leader is not easy. You are going to face so much opposition, even within your party, even within your cabinet members. So you need you need somebody who will damn the consequences and not look at the faces of uh, uh, those that may be around and make the right decision that will benefit the people. That's who Ashiwaju is. We need a bold man. We don't need a, 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 a weakling as a president. Somebody will be angry. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Deborah was killed and uh, the candidate of the PDP put out a post condemning it. As soon as there was a little outrage from, from the people, immediately was deleted. No, what is wrong is wrong. If the death of Deborah was wrong, it doesn't matter who is angry, you make the statement very clear. That's the kind of boldness we're talking about. You need somebody who will be able to stand and give policies. Even in the midst of staggering opposition, remain steadfast. That's who Ashiwaju is. And that's why I believe there will be a change in his administration because he will make sure what he wants is what will benefit the people. Is this, this boldness that you're talking about that he is trying to show us by choosing a Muslim uh, deputy uh, against the cries of Nigerians? He just wants to show us how bold he is? Or you think that's the right decision that he should have taken at a, a time where the volatility in Nigeria has heightened because of the same uh, religious sentiments and ethnic sentiments? You see, uh, I, I'll call it boldness. On the other hand, boldness again to do what is right at the right time. You see that in his decision. Why do I say that? This is the first time he's contesting. The man has strategically waited all these years for the right time. So he's not trying to be a former presidential candidate. He wants to win the election. If you look, listen to Babuke Lawan, who were the people who recommended candidates, they gave the pros, the advantage of picking a, a Muslim uh, candidate, the disadvantage, and also the advantage of pe uh, picking a Christian vice presidential candidate. And when the two, based on his own calculation and other calculations, it is better to have a minority and a majority. Where the problem is, is Nigerians have decided to divide us even apart from uh, uh, re, uh, uh, by tribe, even religiously. You and I know the Muslims in the South are considered minority. When and how that come about, I don't know. The Christians in the North are considered minority. So to have two minorities in a national election, in a presidential ballot, it was not wise according to their calculation. And that's why he picked a Northerner who is a Muslim, just to be able to balance the ticket. So, it, not to spike a Christian. For Christ's sake, this man, his wife is a pastor and has been for years. Some of his children are Christians. So, he's not somebody that we should be afraid of or, you know, if he's going to hurt the Christians. No, he would not. You know, don't forget, we are voting for the candidate. It, it's the power that the president gives the vice that he's going to, to, to be able to use. So, for him, as a candidate, he's the one we are, we, that went to the primary election he is the one that we, uh, the delegate chose. Yes, he picks his vice presidential candidate. But the decision now is which is best, which will give us this uh, election. Do I just pick it so that some people will be happy? No. Again, that brings me back to my other point. Making decisions that may not be popular, but is best for the society. That's what we need now as president. Many people could have done otherwise and probably uh, go into the election and when campaigns start, they will begin to see the disadvantage of having two minorities in the, in the, on the ballot, end up losing the election, you begin to regret. But there are times you need to make some bold decisions. In this case, I'm comfortable with it. Do, do I want it to be a, a, uh, the vice presidential candidate to be a Christian? Of course, but it doesn't end there. There are going to be ministers who are going to be Christians. I'm sure there are going to be some who are going to be pastors who are going to be in this cabinet. And there are governors also in the country who are Christians. Over eight governors in APCs are, uh, in APC are Christian. So the vice presidential candidate being a Muslim should not defy the totality of this man. It's just a political calculation uh, to be able to win this election. Okay, right now, um, let's talk about um, what is really happening. Uh, your uh, principal, as it is, Ashiwaju, has said that um, the redesigning of the Naira was aimed at him, fuel scarcity was aimed at him, and El Rufai also came up, Governor El Rufai of Kaduna State also came up and said that they, uh, they are fifth columnists within Aso Rock trying to work hard to make sure that Ashiwaju does not succeed. Now, is it his uh, strength being tried, 
or is there really a problem in the APC that we need to know? Like, like every organization, uh, there are always issues issue come up. Uh, the ability to manage crisis is what makes you a leader. Yes, this issue has come up. It is obvious when you listen to somebody like Erofa, a governor close to the president, close to the villa. I don't think that man will come out and say and you know release a statement if he had no credible evidence and proof that this is true. And, but when you look at it generally, why is this done in such a haste at this time? This could have been done since June before the primary election. This could have been done since May last year. All better still, wait until after the election. Why do we, why do we need now? Not just now. You, you, you're taking out the old currency from circulation and you're not putting the new one into circulation. Who do you think people are going to be angry at? Of course, APC. They are, they're going to be angry, even though it's not Ashwadu's policies, even though it's not Ashwadu that, that is doing it. The general statement will be APC, APC is doing this to us. Ashwadu, APC is doing this to us. Of course, it's going to affect him. Hey, so, doctor, I, I just, really if I may, if I may, doctor, um, yes. are you insinuating that the president is working against Ashiwaju because uh, the president is the minister of petroleum. The president is the chairman of a committee that ha has been set to make sure that uh, fuel is available to Nigerians. The president is the one who gave the nod, the go-ahead, for uh, the governor of the central bank, Godwin Emefele, to do the redesigning of the notes. Every finger on these things that we are talking about points to the president. And if there is someone who is working against Ashiwaju because, or through fuel scarcity and redesigning of the Naira, the president is responsible. Are you saying that the president might be working against Ashiwaju? Just for Absolutely clarity? not. Absolutely so not. So who could do that, those things that we are talking about right now? Because Lai Mohammed also, he practically lives in Ashurok. El Rufai, like you said, is close to the presidency. Fine. He goes to Asurok. He He's close to the president himself. But Lai Mohammed is a minister of information in this administration. And he came out to say there are no fifth columnists. All of them are in APC. All of them are in this government. Who do we believe? Okay. Again, let me make it clear. The president is not working against Ashiwaju. On Saturday, the president was in Asarawa. He had firm in support. If you look at the campaign schedule, the president will be being emo. The president will be in uh, Lagos. The president is campaigning and is telling Nigerians to go to Ashiwaju. But understand the, the procedure here. Like Comrade Adam Fushomori stated on Sunday on China's television, we believe that the CBM governor must have told the president that redesigning the Naira note is going to stop corruption in this election. And if you know President Muhammadu Bari, when he hears corruption, the man wakes up. Because he hates corruption. But he do you knows. think it will? Do you think it will stop we, corruption in this election? No, that's that's the. I'm sure that's the message that was given to the president. That uh, if we redesign the Naira notes, probably those who stock uh, the money up will not have the money to spend. And as a result, the president gave the go ahead to make sure the Naira note is redesigned. But on the other hand, the president. I don't think the president was aware that Nigerians are suffering. Even the new currency is not in circulation. This is the problem we have. If you stop the old Naira notes, make sure there are new Naira notes out there. I'm sure if there were new Naira notes, Nigeria would not be complaining. This is not about APC. The only reason why we're angry is you're trying to make APC look bad a few days to the election so that Nigerians will, uh, will be angry. They brought Biva. They complained about Biva as if we were scared of Biva. Now they have seen that we are going to work the election. Biva actually helped in our state election. Now you saw our... our uh, a candidate, the former governor, as we claim his position back, because the Biva is working for us. We are going about, we are campaigning, we are letting Nigerians know that they look for a different strategy to cause frustration by, by redesigning the narrative. Okay. Why are they hoping? Okay. I draw this out, you know, I was just on a rice TV not too long. This is the old, uh, old uh, $100 bid. This was changed years ago, but it's still in circulation. Now they have the new one. They did not stop this overnight. When you bring out a new currency, you don't just put policy, you have 10 days to go and, and drop your money. It's supposed to be gra a gradual process. Banks will no longer be releasing the old Naira notes. They'll begin to yes. give out the new one. Yes, you doctor, cannot, you touched on something. You, you touched on something. Naira, 
old Naira notes, and yet you have no uh, 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 new Naira note to give to the people, and you expect the people to be happy with the APC. That's no. where the people is. Yeah, That's I, I quite understand, I Doctor. Just back. a moment. I believe I, him because I know he will not just come out to speak. I quite understand uh, the frustration. I quite understand where, what you're talking about, giving the APC a bad name. But aside from that, um, this is like a legacy project for uh, President Muhammad Buhari. But I'm asking you a personal question. It's probably a yes or no answer. Do you think the redesigning of the Naira notes will curb corruption in any way in this election? I don't think it will curb any corruption. What, 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 what are we even talking about when it comes to uh, corruption? Is it the responsibility of CBN to fight corruption? That's the question. Emefele was going to run for president under our party. If he was the candidate, will he be excited this is going on? We have to just be fair. This okay. is a democratic society. Okay. Will, he be, will he allow this to happen if he was the candidate of our party? Hmm. Everybody is angry with APC. Even me, that is not even the administration. I have no business. I'm even suffering the same thing. Three days now, I can't even wire, uh, send any money. I'm sure the network are all jammed up. People are angry with everybody APC as if we are the cause of it. That's why I know and I believe uh, okay. uh, Aerofan. There are people there. But guess what? Here's the news flash. And here's the good news to all APC. We are winning this election. And like Aerofan said, after the election, it's going to call those names out. And I can't wait to hear who those people are. We're going to win this. Yeah, well, well, name calling. We've been hearing about name calling. We've been told Boko Haram people, there's a list of people who sponsor them. We've not heard it. We've been told a lot of times names that should be uh, in public glare so that we know a lot of things. But we've not heard them. Uh, that's not the issue. I'll, I'll just ask, um, this this other problem of the president going to some states in the north, like Kano, Katsina, and we hear and we've seen some videos that it was pelted. And there have been a war of words between uh, the uh, Dogara of the PDP and also uh, Festus Kiyamo, who is of your PCC, the APC PCC. Now, I, I don't know which side you stand. I don't know which, uh, what word you would have for situations like that, the war that is going on between supporters of these candidates and what really happened in the North. Just briefly before we take a, a break for the news. Of course, I, I stand with Kayamu, I stand with my party. And uh, Dogara mentioning that the president is joking because he endorsed the candidate. Uh, I, I, I don't think uh, that should be coming out okay. of, of uh, somebody's right. mouth in the heat of campaign, a few days to election. All right. The president, okay. out of his busy schedule, went to Nasarawa to campaign, and you said he's, a, he's joking. Joking about what? You know, so I stand with our party. Understand, like I, like I tell people, the average Nigeria should know this is political season. It's a time where politicians throw jab. Don't be surprised. This is going to happen. All what right. you should look at, look beyond the jab, you look beyond the name calling, look beyond the attacks, okay. and look at the issue. Who is the right person for the job? All because right. this is going to happen. It happened all over the, all over the world. It's, Nigeria is not exceptional. We still have Dr. Nicholas Felix talking with us here on the show. Dr. Felix, not only is a politician, but he's also a cleric who has a very big Christian center, if I must say that. So right now, I'm jettisoning the fact that he belongs to APC, and I'm just talking to him as a concerned Nigerian and also someone who controls people from the pulpit. And that, I do not mean just being a Christian. I mean clerics of all religions, what they need to do. First of all, let's start with... Um, uh, political followership. Uh, it's been a very consistent thing in our polity that we follow politics like people follow clubs, football clubs. It doesn't matter what is happening. People don't even want to enjoy the football. They just want to see their team win. Um, so in your capacity as a man of God, uh, not a politician now, uh, how do you think is, uh, or politics is supposed to be played by citizens of a country who want their country to work, especially if they are men and women of faith. How do we now marry faith, that is religion, and politics, and make it work? Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that question. And uh, you see, uh, the Nigerian church has not been involved in politics. Growing up, they've always asked us to prepare to go to heaven. 
you know, that politics is evil. Politics is dirty. You don't need to get into politics. And that's what you see in the church is suffering today. Uh, the church is just waking up, just like the youth are waking up also. So I encourage everyone out there, uh, pastors, you know, Christians, and uh, to get into politics. This is not the case with the Muslim because they are already very much involved. I would love to also call them in, but they are already there. But for us as Christians, we need to get into politics. Uh, even the Bible clearly declares when the wicked rule, the people suffer. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. If you don't go into politics and you allow those who don't mean well for the country to get into power, your prayer point in Nigeria will increase. That's why today there are things we're praying for in Nigeria that we are not supposed to be praying for. Look at how God has shown us favor as a nation, blessed us with mineral resources, natural oil, and all of that. And yet, we are disturbing him every day with prayers because we have not managed it well. Supposed to be one of the most blessed nations on earth today. But because the, the good people have ventured out of politics, and that's why we are, we, we are here today. So I encourage everyone out there to get into politics. Politics is not a dirty game. People just play it dirty. So when you have clean people going into politics, they'll play it clean. And if the good people refuse to join politics, uh, I think we're going to pay the, the, the price. So there's nothing wrong uh, for even pastors who get into politics. There's nothing wrong in pastors now encouraging your members to run for various offices so we can cause a change in the land. Okay, what about the youths, especially youths of nowadays, the Gen Zs and the other ones uh, that we're seeing? Patience is a virtue that is not so common nowadays. Uh, do you mm -hmm. think the political terrain is fertile enough to accept the youths with this kind of attitude, with this kind of disposition? Uh, do you think the Nigerian youth is ripe enough to go into politics with the situation in the political uh, structure and terrain right now in Nigeria? And if they are ripe enough, what do they need to do? Because you are a youth yourself, and if you can't do it, they too can do it. So what are some tips for them? Yes, if I can do it, you definitely can do it even more. Now, to the youth, I always say this, because I notice uh, there are a lot of candidates, especially those who are in uh, the Labour Party movement, they get very, very, very insulting. They attack you from left and right. This is not how we are going to run our politics. Especially you see youth attacking fellow youths because we don't support your candidates. Sometimes I even wonder if they know that this is democracy. This is not dictatorship. We have three leading candidates. And as a Nigerian, we all have our legal rights, moral uh, right to vote and support whoever we want to support. You know, So if they must take us serious, we must be very calculated. All these insults on social media, nobody is going to take us serious. I don't want it to get to where now the Nigeria youth are categorized as uh, very irresponsible people. That's why many of us are standing out that we are not the average Nigerian youth who go out there insulting people, who go out there and don't take responsibility uh, and, you know, to do the right thing. No, there are still people out there, Nigerian youth, who are ready to take over the party, who are on the same race with them, ready to take over when the time is right. So to every youth out there, you know, just checking some of my, my responses, so people get very insulted because I'm not supporting your candidate. We went through a primary election. I see what you won the, the, the election. And uh, verified by INEC, certified by INEC, I was given the ticket to run under the platform. We all have the right to vote for him if we so choose to. And I must say, he's the best candidate that we give the youth a voice. I know that for sure. That's why I'm here on this platform campaigning for him. So for youth out there to be insulting, you know, making jest of them, some people making mockery, is, is, is so wrong. And today you see people talking about his health, talking about his age. To grow old is a blessing. Let's not make mockery of that. We have to be more responsible than this. We are better than this as youth in Nigeria. We don't want to be classified as people who are not serious. You think social media is going to help you? You think because you have data, you can go and insult people, that's how you are going to cause a change? No, you will not cause a change like that. Rather, they'll still put you at the back. Before you know it, the next election will come and the same thing will repeat itself. We have to be more serious. No need to be insulting people. Let's get on the issues. If you feel your candidate is the best, let me know why you think he's the best. I will also explain to you why mine is the best. No need to be insulting 
and dragging people, calling names and all manner of things. That is very wrong. We, we need to do better than this. Yes, thank you for the admonition. But um, is the political ground fertile enough for the youths? What are some of the things that you did before you broke into uh, the, the, the arena, so to speak, that you are seeing yourself right now? What are the steps that you needed to take? Because some youths may not even know how to go about it if they want to belong or they want to participate very well in politics. Some have had the impression that politics needs a lot of money, which they don't have. Some have the impression that politics needs a lot of connections, which they may not have, and so on and so forth. So tell us, describe to us how easy or otherwise it will be for a youth, for a young man or a young woman, to break into the political scene and make a name. The, the, the first thing is your drive, your, your passion, your reason. That's the only thing that will keep you in politics. That's why in 2019, most of the candidates have quit politics because it's brutal. This is not a joke. It's not for the weakling. It's not for weak people. You have to be, you have to be bold. You have to be ready to take up uh, uh, issues, attacks, left and right. So that's the first step. And what is your passion? What is your drive? Are you just going there to eat from the national cake or you're just going there for your name? You will not survive the political arena. For me, my passion is the, the, the desire to cause a change, the need for a change. I see youth every day. People are yearning. They are, they are just waiting for you to get there so you can cause a change. This is what is keeping me on. So, number two, you don't need to wait to have a lot of money. You need to have a vision to get into the political race. Number three, again, you cannot be insulting these people and you want them to open the door for you. That's one of the things some people don't know uh, when it comes to politics. Yes, they are not doing some of the things that ought to be done, but you need to be able to get on board, to be able to make the change. You don't have to be president to begin a change. You can be a counselor. You start making change, the effective change from there. A, a House of Rep member, whatever position you find yourself at the moment. But going out there, insulting them. We have candidates today, I, I don't want to mention them, who every in Nigeria, they are evil. Every politician out there, they are no good. If it's up to him, arrest all of them, send them to jail, do all of this. Thing. You will never get access to be able to cause the change. You will just become uh, frustrated out of the game. So the first thing is to be able to come in. I understand there are so much to be done. I understand that uh, uh, everything is not working right. Identify a few persons that may be doing good here and there. I take example like the governor of Oregon State. It's one man I saw who has done great things in the in the state. I mean, compared to others, he has did well. The, the governor of National State is a man, one of the governors. I see a lot of youth, even in their twenties, in his administration. You acknowledge people like that. They may not be the best. They may not have done everything uh, so right. But the fact that this man, commissioner of youth and sport, is a young man, I know him very well. You have a lot of commissioners who are young people. These are young men, uh, governors you can associate with, you know, draw close to them so that they can pull you in and gradually get your yourself in. But going on social media, insulting them, making mockery of them, all of them are evil, they should all die, it's not going to work. We will never make it like that. We we'll keep doing the same thing. Before you know it, those who were 30 campaigning, now they are in their 50s, they are in their 60s. Now we'll be, we're looking for a new generation to come up. If this generation don't get it right, we will never be able to make it there. And the further we go, it gets worse. You need to prepare themselves now and get on the court, get on the race with them. So we'll be able to take over so they can prepare the future for us and also prepare us uh, for the future. But all these insults out there, you know, all the only thing we have time for is social media and insulting people who don't believe in your candidate. We need to do better than uh, this as youth. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Felix, for coming on the show. Dr. Felix is the National Youth Coordinator, APC, P P PCC. Thank you very much for being a part of our program. Thank you for having me. It was so nice hanging around with you. Good to see you. Okay, like I said, Dr. Felix is a Deputy National Youth Coordinator, APCPCC. He is a cleric, but he's also uh, a politician, and he's ad admonishing everybody that uh, uh, when good people are in power, the people will rejoice. And who are you? If you're good, you should be in power. You should struggle to be in power so that your people will, be re will rejoice. If you're bad, well, that's matter for another day. Well, this is our Nigeria. No matter how biting the condition might be, wherever you stand, this too shall pass.
let's take everything one day at a time. We will survive this. And you should not take laws into your hands because you don't find the Naira or you don't find the fuel. God might also be using it to talk to you that you should stay one place, enjoy less, and save more. And, you know, a lot of other things will be added on to you. But the main thing is that we have 18 days, 19 hours, and 35 minutes to the presidential election. If you have not prepared yourself, do so now with all the things that you need to do. Do them so that that day you can vote for a candidate of your choice. It's been a wonderful run with you guys. Now let's do it again tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. My name is Nyamgul Agaji on behalf of the entire team saying bye for now.